In modern warfare, air superiority is essential. To control the skies, air forces have built the most highly evolved military machines ever made. Strike planes that can deliver lethal force anywhere, anytime. Now designers are creating a new breed of strike planes that will be able to carry out their mission with unparalleled superiority. These new generation aircraft will be faster, deadlier, and stealthier than ever before. This plane, the F-15 Eagle, was built for one purpose and one purpose only, total air superiority. It was created to combat the threat posed by the Soviet MiG fighters during the height of the Cold War in the 70s, and was the first strike plane that could detect and kill from many miles away, as well as engage in dogfights. It's still in operation today, and in 30 years of active service, it has never been shot down in one-on-one -on -one air combat. It is the benchmark by which all modern strike planes are judged. The F-15 has seen active service in both Gulf Wars and is now keeping the peace patrolling the skies above the west coast of the United States with the Oregon Air National Guard, constantly on the lookout for any threat to the U.S.'s national security. I'm Mo Gass, a major in the Oregon Air National Guard, and I fly the F-15. My name is Paul Fitzgerald. I'm an F-15 pilot for the Oregon Air National Guard. Major Dale Bennett, known as Mo Gass, and Major Paul Fitzgerald, known as SNAP, are former airline pilots, but now they work as fighter pilots at the Air National Guard. They are on alert 24-7 and are ready to scramble and shoot down intruders at a moment's notice. The F-15 uh, is a pretty incredible airplane, actually. Uh, uh, thinking about its uh, design was uh, in the late 50s, 60s, came off the production line in the mid 70s, uh, so it's been around for quite some time. It's a pretty uh, powerful airplane. It was actually built to, to rule the skies and strictly in an air superiority type of a, a role, and uh, it has not lost in battle yet, and I don't think it, uh, it's going to lose anytime soon. The F-15 first flew in 1972. Over 1,200 were built and now there are still over 500 flying on active duty. It's a pretty big airplane. It was actually built to house the radar that uh, lives in the nose. The airplane is about 43 feet tall, about 63, 64 feet long, and at the tail it's just under uh, 20 feet high. So it's a pretty large airplane. It's been akin to the size of a tennis court. As well as patrolling the skies for intruders, the pilots of the Air National Guard also carry out training exercises. Mo Gas and Snap are planning a simulated dogfight where they will practice shooting enemy planes out of the sky. Mission objectives for the Blue Air is quick kill. Being a frontline fighter pilot is a hazardous job, and every time they fly, they may encounter the enemy and have to deploy lethal force. My mission then is to uh, turn them into hair, teeth, and eyeballs. Uh, realistically, uh, it's you know it's kill or be killed. Uh, and, and fortunately, I think all of us have, uh, have resolved ourselves to the fact that uh, uh, you're taking out the other guy's airplane. If he has a good ejection seat, uh, then it's a good day for him. If he doesn't have a good ejection seat, then that's one of the dangers and the, the threats that we live with. The F-15 carries a range of missiles and a cannon with 900 rounds of high explosive bullets. We have two arenas we normally fight in. It's within visual range and then, of course, beyond visual range. Uh, within visual range, I have a 20-millimeter uh, cannon that's in the, the right wing root of the airplane. Once you start moving into a, a little bit further out, uh, out into miles and so, uh, we start talking about the uh, heat-seeking missile. And then once you get beyond that range, uh, now you start talking about the advanced medium-range air-to-air missile that we use, uh, otherwise known as the AMRAAM. The real benefit uh, of the AMRAAM is uh, its ability to really get out there and reach out and, and touch someone and uh, turn them into pieces and parts. The F-15 has two giant engines producing a combined thrust of 46,900 pounds between them, capable of pushing the plane to a top speed of 3,000 kilometers per hour. That's around three times the speed of a 747. The thrust that you get out of these airplanes gets you off the ground fast and gets you to where you need to get fast. 
the biggest advantage of having a great thrust to weight ratio uh, is the ability to uh, power through a turn and uh, to not only turn as quick as you can, uh, but also to be able to sustain that turn in combat. It, it might take, uh, in order to kill the enemy, it might take three or four uh, 360 degree turns uh, in order to successfully get behind them and get into a weapons engagement zone and, and to uh, either shoot a missile off or to, to shoot the gun. But turning at high speeds exerts massive forces known as G-forces on the pilot. One G is the force of normal gravity. When the pilot makes a high G turn, the weight of their body is multiplied by the same number. Six and a half right there. At six and a half Gs, a 76 kilogram pilot would feel as if he weighs six and a half times as much. That's 496 kilograms. In order to be able to cope with the nine Gs that the airplane will pull and actually sustain for a little bit of time, uh, they give us several different pieces of equipment to help that happen. That's a combat edge vest. Uh, it fills up with air, keeps the internal pressure in your, in your chest cavity uh, so the blood it can actually get pushed out of your chest cavity and into your head. Uh, most important is your G pants too, uh, G suit otherwise known as. Uh, it tightens up, it also moves the blood from your lower extremities into your, into your uh, chest and obviously to try to keep the blood in your head so that you can keep blood in your eyes so that you can see and think. The color goes out of your vision first. Uh, the second thing that goes is obviously you have tunnel vision and that's followed by stages of going unconscious and that's the whole reason we're trying to avoid that. You don't want to be manipulating the controls of an airplane when you're unconscious. The pilots also wear a helmet with an oxygen mask in case the cockpit were to depressurize at high altitude, something no pilot wants when engaging the enemy at 9,000 meters.